Aloha, uh, brothers and sister uh, members of IUCN, and, and thank you so much, uh, Professor Giard. And I also wanted to thank Laura Duarte, who has done so much uh, to um, put together this very important explanation of the Climate Crisis Commission. And when I say uh, aloha, I, I, it is a way we have in Hawaii of recognizing the beauty and the breath of life in every human spirit. So many of you shared our magnificent island state with us in 2016, when over 10,000 people came to the last Congress, the IUCN Congress in Honolulu. It is a cherished memory for many of us uh, in Hawaii. Uh, friends, with your permission, I would like to describe the motion to create a climate crisis commission in the context of emergency, survival, and the transformative power of IUCN to achieve solutions. The genesis or the beginning of this commission what caused the movement to create a climate crisis commission is an unprecedented emergency, so many of us are aware of, an emergency so severe that it threatens the survival of future generations. And as we have learned from the most recent report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, it is an emergency that has accelerated faster than we expected at the IUCN Congress in 2016. And now this crisis is creating catastrophic damage to present generations. As the Secretary General of the United Nations has stated, the climate emergency is far more of a threat to humanity than the COVID pandemic because humanity can recover from the COVID emergency. In Honolulu in 2016, there was a lot of hope among us all that IUCN would be able to fulfill its mission, its mandate to protect nature. The Paris Agreement had been reached in 2015, less than a year earlier. There was hope the world community would provide solutions. And so in 2016, climate change was not the primary theme of our IUCN Congress in Honolulu, but a climate task force was created as a result of members' concern about global warming. It was the second IUCN climate task force. The first was created at the 2012 Congress, a number of us on the last task force, and I had the privilege of being on that task force, came to a painful, very painful conclusion. During the nearly 10 years of IUCN task forces studying how IUCN should respond to the climate emergency, humanity has become engulfed. It has been swallowed in the existential emergency the Paris Agreement sought to avoid in 2015. And without question, humanity cannot afford to have IUCN engage in task forces for another 10 years. Now it is upon us. The Paris Agreement hasn't worked. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change hasn't worked. The Conference of the Parties of the United Nations hasn't worked. Environmental defenders standing up for sacred resources critical to the health of the planet are being murdered. They are being killed at the rate of three a week, according to the United Nations. And so far, their sacrifices have not worked. IUCN does have six commissions, each with a mandate, a mandate to protect nature in some way. However, no commission has a mandate to protect nature from climate change. For example, the Species Survival Commission and the Protected Areas Commission have protection of species and protection of protected areas as their mandates. The other commissions are the Commission on Education and Communication, 
the Commission on Ecosystem Management, the Commission on Environmental, Economic, and Social Policy, and the World Commission on Environmental Law. At present levels of greenhouse gas emissions, when within this century, the earth heats to 1.5 degrees and over 100 million people have to leave Bangladesh because of sea level rise, and the greatest food basket, the greatest food ecosystem on earth in Southeast Asia that produces our rice, is dead because of saltwater intrusion. At that time, IUCN is likely to disappear. The commissions are likely to disappear. The devastation to biodiversity and the collapse of life-sustaining ecosystems will mean the likely elimination of each commission and IUCN. To survive, and this is a difficult concept. Judges deal with it all over the world. It's the most important issue facing humanity, the survival issue arising from the climate emergency. To survive, IUCN must empower young people and indigenous communities on the front line who are now being devastated by global warming and being marginalized. Therefore, it is now a matter of survival that IUCN apply its great collaborative innovative strengths to forge a climate protection plan and implement, implement that plan. IUCN can do it. As an example, with faith, strong science and unremitting commitment to protecting nature, IUCN conceived the concept of applying legal protection to species identified as endangered and worthy of protection. Now, laws protecting endangered species are in place throughout the world, but no more task forces. IUCN must act as it did to protect endangered species with the strength of a commission complete with a steering committee, the support of the professional staff of the secretariat, and of course, the enormous fundraising capability of a commission, an emergency commission to protect the earth from climate change. The International Energy Agency estimated an expenditure of at least a trillion dollars a year for the next seven years during this window that we have left to be able to get carbon emissions under control, to get greenhouse gas emissions under control. During the seven years, at least a trillion dollars a year will be necessary to address global warming. No organization is as capable as IUCN in ensuring that such massive investment is done with due regard for social justice and environmental protection. IUCN must lead with its 14,000 NGO members combined with the nations of the world, an unprecedented collection of committed forces. No other organization has this type of global organization. IUCN must lead to employ a climate protection plan. It must manifest its unmatched power for collaboration between civil society and the nations of the world. The Climate Crisis Commission will be an extraordinary, collaborative, galvanizing tool to combine the talents of all IUCN commissions to identify and deploy a climate protection plan to protect Earth's biodiversity and thereby sustain the ecosystems upon which humanity defend, depends. The vote for the commission will take place on September 8th or 9th during the General Assembly. It has not been scheduled as yet. May I humbly suggest that no vote ever cast in the history of IUCN can make as much difference as yours to the future of nature, 
the future of biodiversity and the survival of future generations. A vote for the Climate Crisis Commission will be a vote of courage and faith that despite the dire predictions of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, despite the failures of the governmental and civil society institutions of our civilization, we can together embrace available solutions, solutions that are now available to protect Earth and its miraculous life-sustaining ecosystems. Brothers and sisters of IUCN, when you see the young members of IUCN rushing among you at the Congress to obtain votes and proxies at the Congress, and we encourage you to go to the website and provide your proxies. When you see these Vanguard members, the young members of our Vanguard at the Congress in pursuit of their survival, when you listen to the seasoned leaders of IUCN and the scientific community, such as Dr. Sylvia Earle, Maude Lillivray, president of the French Comité of IUCN, Professor Brendan Mackey of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, who has been on both of these task forces in the last 10 years. Professor Nicholas Robinson, former chair of the World Commission on Environmental Law, or esteemed jurists, such as former Justice Emmanuel Aguirre Shibuya, the former president of the East African Court. When you hear their voices, when you consider their plea for this commission, please imagine success. It, we can be successful. A climate crisis commission can, with the courage, commitment, and in integrity and faith of IUCN, uh, it can galvanize IUCN to protect our planet and humanity. So, Thank you very much for your attention. I am uh, so grateful to speak to you from Hawaii at 6.30 in the morning. And I invite all of you to visit Hawaii. It is really in the collective human consciousness, it may well be the ideal environment on earth. So we would love to welcome you back here. And please help us pass motion 003 to create a climate crisis commission. Thank you so much for your attention this morning and aloha.